Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful Oscar Strauss operetta, A Waltz Dream, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Kirsten. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're off for the fabulous kingdom of Flausenturn, where Dorothy Kirsten is the lovely Princess Helen, and I am her new husband, the brash young Lieutenant Nicky. Three-quarter time, maestro for a waltz dream. My loyal subjects, let us all welcome our princess and her new consort from Vienna. Ah, here they come, all together now. A rousing welcome. Welcome, my children. <clears throat> my loyal subjects, it is my honor to present to you my new son-in-law, Lieutenant... Uh, 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 Mr... Beg uh, uh, pardon, uh, have you a card? No, I don't. Uh, don't think I'm rude, but I didn't quite catch your name. Uh, Nicholas. But his friends call him Nicky, Father. Uh, his name is Nicholas, but his nickname is Nicky. <laughs> uh, well, my dear son-in-law, it's your turn to make a speech. I have absolutely nothing to say, sir. Oh, that doesn't matter. I never have anything to say, but still to make a speech on every possible occasion. Tell him anything you like. You say anything? Mm. Very well. <laughs> Are born to rule the land and purple robes they don them, while some upon the other hand have greatness thrust upon them. And I believe that some achieve by sheer determination, position great in spite of fate or other combination. Now I was but a soldier, plain contented with my station, with ne'er a thought that I'd attain my present elevation. Freedom no longer mine, woman and song and wine, forbidden pleasures, bachelor's treasures, scarce can control my rage, but in a gilded case, when you your life's a blank page. Victim am I of unlucky star, mad at the bars now and chain me. Oh, what a life, what a young hussar. Still there's no power can restrain me. Comrades and women and wine and song, I much prefer to this courtly throng. Though aching, and breaking, I've always been taught. Hearts cannot be bartered, love cannot be bought. Hearts cannot be bartered, love cannot be bought. Well, really. And now I bid you all good day. My emperor forced me into this marriage. Now that it's done, don't bother me. Oh. Any of you. Oh, Father, 
Why isn't he in love with me? Oh, and I'm so much in love with him. There, there, my child. After all, you've just been introduced. You've just been married. Give it a chance. I never paid any attention to anybody else before. Why must he be the one I had to fall in love with? The princess who never was known to sigh, whose laughing eye could tears defy, has learned the tale of a foolish fly and spider who pursued her. Pursued her. For love, as you know, is an ancient game, results the same as mock and flame. The Your Highness or anybody else's. Why, that's like calling me Mr. Princess. No, thank you. Oh, Nicky, you're a married man now. Now, let's put it this way. My wife is a married woman. She's in love with you, and she's one of the most beautiful women in all Europe. But look what I've given up, Munch. I was a lieutenant in the crack Austrian regiment, my career ahead of me. And suddenly, at the Emperor's command, I'm a... a prince consort. Nicky, imagine marrying me to a woman I've never spoken five words to. Why, it's outrageous. Huh? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to make that old father-in-law of mine so sick of the bargain that he'll have the marriage annulled and send me back to, uh, to wonderful Vienna. Well, how are you going to do that? I'm going to flirt with every woman I meet. Well, uh, what if you fall in love with one of them? Ha! Huh. The woman doesn't live who can make me love her. Individually, women bore me. Collectively, I adore them. <laughs> oh, if I could only be back in Vienna, where the women are as beautiful as the music and... Oh. What's that? <laughs> can a man's imagination be so vivid? Do you hear it, Munch? Certainly, Nicky. It's not your imagination, old man. It's an orchestra, a real Viennese ladies' orchestra. They're playing in the outdoor restaurant right alongside the palace garden. Did you say ladies? All ladies? Right down to the glockenspiel. And I'm told that the conductor is the most beautiful thing that ever waved a baton. Oh, she has entranced me already with the music. Why, Munch, that's my favorite waltz. Why, look, it's, it's so Viennese, why, even the shadows are dancing. The soft summer twilight was fading. I sat in the garden alone. The zephyrs of night serenading. The trees with their mystical tone. The leaves seemed to thrill to each measure. The boughs beating time to each strain. The flowerlets all nodding their pleasure. On 
Lieutenant's uniform and go serenade those lovely serenaders. But, Your Highness, it's, uh, it's your wedding night. Oh, that. Well, never mind that. And if anybody should ask you, I am not the Prince Consort, but just Lieutenant Nicky. Ah, uh, I'm living again. Living! Song of the rings, I'm Return in a moment for Act Two of A Waltz Dream. Reports of engineering tests aren't what most of us would choose for light reading, but sometimes they point the way to important savings for lots of people, including you. This is the case with a report just issued, the final report on a test conducted by the Highway Research Board for 11 state highway departments on a stretch of paved road in Maryland. The purpose of the test was to find out what happens to our public highways under the pounding of heavy motor vehicles. Preliminary reports of the results of the test have shown what your common sense would lead you to expect. That is, that the heavier the loads put on roads, the greater the damage to the pavement. They show that with an increase of only 25% in the weight on single axles, pavement damage went up by more than 500%. And with an increase of only 40% on dual or tandem axles, Damage to the pavement went up more than 1,100%. The final report just issued goes further and shows a lot more about how tandem or dual axles behave. These dual axles, two placed close together at one end of a truck or trailer, are permitted in most states to carry loads of as much as 32,000 pounds, and in some states even more, on the theory that such loads are equivalent to the 18,000 pounds on single axles which is the maximum loading for which most of our even better highways are designed. But these carefully conducted scientific tests show something quite different. They show that the maximum load which can be carried on tandem axles without doing more damage than an 18,000-pound load on one axle is not nearly as much as 32,000 pounds. It's only about 25,400 pounds on pavements laid on a subgrade of the silty clay soil, which is typical of a great part of our paved highway mileage. And even on pavements laid on subgrades of granular soil, the maximum load on dual axles should not be more than about 29,300 pounds, unless pavements are to be damaged more than they are by 18,000 pound single axle loads. Well, it's possible, of course, by spending enough money on specially prepared subgrades and extra thick pavements to build roads which will stand up under the pounding of heavy highway freighters. But there are other and better ways to spend highway funds. The money it would take to build a limited mileage of the kind of roads needed only by this small percentage of vehicles could be spent to better advantage by building a greater mileage of roads adequate to every need of your automobile and every need, too, of the overwhelming majority of trucks. 
nor is there any necessity for spending vast sums of public tax funds to take care of the relatively few heavy highway freighters. For the railroads are designed and built to take the heavy loads of the nation's commerce, and their maintenance and repair do not cost the taxpayers a single penny. This ability of the railroads to handle the vast bulk of America's freight traffic means longer life for the public highways you use and pay for. It means more convenience and greater safety on the road for you. And it means that all costs considered, the railroads provide for America the most economical, most efficient transportation service to be found anywhere in the world. Now here is act two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Oscar Strauss' A Waltz Dream, starring Gordon McRae as Lieutenant Nicky and Dorothy Kirsten as the Princess Helen. <laughs> I wonder if you could help me out. Are you the leader of the Viennese Ladies Orchestra? Yes. Fräulein Franzi at your service. Well, I'm a, you might say, a, a neighbor, and I need some advice. I'd be glad to help. Tell me, you Viennese women are such experts at it. Uh, how do you go about trapping a man? Hmm? One you're in love with. Oh, that's very simple. You must be alluring, mysterious. You must say no when you mean maybe. And maybe when you mean yes. But you must never say yes. Now, uh, look here. For tonight's concert, we're all of us going to wear a mask. Ladies of Vienna, beauties of Vienna. Oh, dear. Do you mind if I put on this mask? Oh, help yourself. Now, isn't that typical of the alluring lady of Vienna? She greets me in a mask. Good evening. My dear, you have entranced me by your beautiful Viennese music. Play some more for me. Uh, go ahead. Take the baton. It's very simple. All right. Lieutenant, this is for you. Life is love and laughter, one sweet song. Life's a sweet delight, sorrow cannot blight. Tears may follow after, love goes wrong. Sing them all. Deceiving if sweethearts prove false. Don't waste your time grieving. Come join in the waltz. If love is deceiving, if sweethearts prove false, don't waste your time grieving. Come join in the waltz. I'm sure still in the sea, quite as good as have been taken. Let's go and sing a morris song. And Franzi, your music has captivated me. Tell me, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm attending this ridiculous wedding uh, as a guest. Oh, you think it's ridiculous? I understand the princess is charming, lovely, alluring, beautiful, magnetic. These are, of course, the opinions of others. Well, I prefer a woman like you. <laughs> this uh, prince consort, is he a friend of yours? Oh, you might say so. Back in Vienna, we used to sleep in the same barracks. I'm told he's really a mere nobody. Well, his birthday isn't a legal holiday, but he's really quite a clever chap. Dashing and handsome, you know. <laughs> well, I've never had the opportunity to say so before. 
Well, enough of this. Let's talk about ourselves. Lieutenant, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, you're holding my hand. I noticed. Lieutenant, you're standing awfully close. You attract me, Franzia, as, as only a woman of Vienna can. Why, your every breath is Viennese. I'm certain that your heart beats exclusively in, in three-quarter time. Oh? You compel me to... to kiss you. Lieutenant! Lou... Mm, you should be a captain! I care to kiss you again. Well, we'll have to do something about that. If your music fails to sweep you into an emotional mood, then perhaps mine can. Oh? Are you a musician, Lieutenant? Well, after a fashion. You studied music because of the love of art? No, for spite. You see, I quarreled once with my brother. He had the adjoining room to mine at home. And to show my great love for him, I, I took lessons on the piccolo. The piccolo? Yes, and I practiced night and day. Well, shall we play a duet? Delighted. Uh, spare piccolo, please. Thank you. I shall begin by playing a few notes that only dogs can hear. Lovely, wasn't it? <laughs> now a, a scale for mere human beings. <sighs> and we begin. Sweet music, so the poets say, maintains a universal sway. For if with angry thought oppressed, sweet music soothes the savage breast. This music is the soul of love, affecting eagle and the dust. The, the fiddle strings that I go and blend it with a pickle. Piccolo, piccolo, sing, 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 music is our origin. Laugh today, tomorrow, sigh. Die to his way, he said, if you cry. Piccolo, piccolo, sing, 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 music is our origin. Laugh today, tomorrow, sigh. Die to his way, if you cry. Piccolo, piccolo, sing, 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 music is our origin. Laugh today, tomorrow, sigh. Oh, a woman like you could only come from Vienna. Oh, you have to listen to me. I have a confession to make. I am married. Oh? But I hope to dissolve it as quickly as possible. For you are the kind of woman, the only kind of woman who can capture my heart. Tell me, am I anything at all like your wife? Oh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> You're complete opposites. My dear lieutenant, look at me closely. Do I bear no resemblance to your wife? None. Absolutely none. My hair? 
A halo of pure beauty. Hers is a mop. My smile? Ah, your smile is sunshine. Hers, a discord. Closer now. My perfume? Ah, the rare scent of Vienna. Her perfume comes from the ice of royalty. Then you must certainly compare our eyes. Therefore, I will remove this mask. Good, good. <sighs> my wife. Yes. Oh, my darling, I forgive you. A wife becomes everything her husband loves. And if you wish me to have the perfume of Vienna and the music of Vienna in my smile, then this princess is your loyal and obedient servant. But I don't understand. How could you suddenly be so alluringly Viennese? Oh, my darling, there are a lot of composers writing Viennese waltzes in Brooklyn, New York. And I think there are a lot of Viennese sausages that have never been anywhere near Austria. <laughs> oh, what a rare, rare thing it is to fall in love with, with your wife. So Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Lovely Dorothy Kirsten will return in just a moment. Meanwhile, our thanks to Francis X. Bushman, Betty Lou Gerson, George Knees, and to all the members of our company. A waltz stream with book and lyrics by Felix Dorman, Leopold Jacobson, and Joseph Herbert, and music by Oscar Strauss, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroad. Now, dear friends, here again is our lovely guest star, Miss Dorothy Kirsten. Thank you, Gordon. It was fun being your wife and your sweetheart both tonight, and either way, I got you. Well, <laughs> we're happy we've got you, Dorothy, and we're also mighty glad you can sort of shuttle between the San Francisco Opera and our Monday night operas here on the Railroad Hour. Wouldn't miss them for anything, Gordon. What's on the show train next Monday night? Well, sir, you and I will be singing the unforgettable melodies of Victor Herbert's Naughty Marietta, Dorothy. I'll mm. practice being naughty all week. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Dorothy. Good night, Gordon. All aboard. Well, folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and Naughty Marietta, this is Gordon McRae saying Goodbye. <laughs> A Waltz Dream was presented by Special Arrangement with Tams Whitmark Music Library Incorporated and Hans Barch Plays. Gordon McRae appeared through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of The Miracle of Fatima. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. This evening, Reese Stevens stars on Voice of Firestone on NBC.